Hello and welcome to a tutorial of Speechbox. My name is Henry and I am one of the developers uh, of the Speechbox app. So what you see here is Speechbox for Macintosh. It's also available on the iPad and iPhone. The functionality is the same across all the different devices. So let me give you a broad tour of Speechbox and how to navigate it. So when you first open up Speechbox, you're going to be presented with pretty much a blank canvas here. As you can see, there's um, uh, uh, quite a number of boxes that I have added to my Speechbox interface, but you're going to start out with the P box that's up here and it's going to automatically download. So what you see here, um, as I said before, these are all of your different boxes and they mean different things. Um, the green and the purple and the blue ones um, here, these are all your photo boxes, while the pink ones here are actually our brand new phrases boxes, which I'll show you in a little bit. So what you're going to do is essentially just pick the box that you'd like to work on and click or tap on the, uh, the box itself. And then it's going to open up and display the contents of the boxes. And you're going to see the photos are going to um, be presented in a randomized order, which uh, allows you to kind of dig around here by just dragging the different photos around until you find something you want. So it's a really a lot of fun to work with kids uh, uh, to have them pick the next photo that they want to work on. So here, we're going to pick this one right here. Pasta. And that's going to then open up. It's going to show the word. Um, and again, you're going to see a really high quality image here when you're working with, uh, kid, working with the kids. And uh, it will say the word. And you can Pasta. tap the word again, and it will also uh, uh, play the sound again. If you are on Macintosh um, and you double click, it will then close the photo. Uh, and if you're on an iPad or an iPhone, all you have to do is pinch it to put it back down. So let's go and pick another one in here. It's gonna pear. Open up the word pear. Now let's, I'm going to draw your, your attention to the lower left-hand corner. So now when the photo is open, if you press the first button here, that little sound. Pear. That's going to play the sound again. The next icon on the screen here is record custom prompt. So if you'd like to record your own audio for this particular photo that will play back, you can, you can do that. The next thing um, down here is the notes button. So if you wanted to enter a note, um, maybe it's like how to pronounce it or it's just something else like, you know, uh, you know focus on the, you know, uh, focus on the P and that'll actually appear right below the um, uh, the word on here. So either it's a note for you as you're prompting the person, or maybe you have it, uh, you know, you want to have a, a short phrase or sentence that you will say after that. Okay, so we'll close that photo. The next thing on the screen here in the middle, you're going to see is the buttons for initial, medial, and final. This allows you to add the different photos for the box for the different placements. So I've just added the medial uh, P sounds, and I'm going to take away now the initial P sound. So you can add and remove the different placements as you see fit. And then it'll tell you in the lower right hand corner here how many pictures are remaining to work with. So, all right, let's focus just on the medial for a second. Now, if you see that there's, there are a lot of different photos in here, um, and let's say that you wanted to tweak the different photos that you have, you can come up here to the upper left and tap that three button icon and that'll bring up the show and hide pictures option. So if there are particular um, uh, words that you do not want to appear when you're working with a, a student or a child, um, you can simply just do that. So I see the word purple on here. So I'm going to go and find that and I'm going to take it out. Uh, it is somewhere in here. There we go. Purple. So I tap on that. And when I close it, it's going to disappear from the screen. So that's how you can manage um, some of the and tweak some of the different photos that you'll see on here. Now let's take a look at the upper right hand corner in here. We'll start with this first flag button up here. When you press this, um, that is going to bring up um, a, a help dialog where you can send us an email for technical support if you're um, in, in need of uh, assistance. The second button in here is going to bring up our settings in here. And I'll give you a quick overview of what you'll see in the settings here. So this is where you can choose the different dialects uh, that you'd like to have. We have um, US, English, female, and male. We have 
uh, UK English female and male and Australian English in female and male. And you can choose between any one of them and the prompts will play back in those particular dialects. The next thing is a little button here to hide the photo text. So if you didn't wanna have those words or um, the notes appear on the photos, just flip that button there. The next thing we have here is custom prompts. So if you did record some audio prompts for your audio, you, for your photos, you can turn them on or off. Uh, and this is globally across all of your boxes. So if you wanna just go back to default, turn that off. The next thing is, is that if you wanted to turn off all prompts altogether, so you just flip that switch there and no um, words or prompts will be played when you open up the different photos. The next button, uh, next option here is called reuse photos. And basically when you remove a, a photo from a box, which I'll show you in just a moment, it'll shuffle it at the bottom uh, of the stack again. So you can have this on or off. By default, what it is is when you remove a photo from a box, it simply just puts it away and um, you would try it again later. And then we also have this option here called data collection. And it's a, a multi-user data collection with report generation. And this is on right now. I'm gonna turn this off because I'm gonna show you how to do that a little bit later. Uh, and then we have some other settings in here. Uh, we have an option where you can back up all of your, your data so you can uh, not lose that if you uh, had a problem with your iPad or your Mac or something and you wanted to restore that data. We also have an option in here where you can manage your Speechbox subscription. Uh, it shows which account you're signed in. You can sign out and you can delete your account if you choose to do that there. All right, so uh, now that we're done with the basic overview of settings, uh, let me show you some of the other options on here. So the next button that you see up here is the add um, picture to box button. And this will allow you to create a new button or uh, create a new photo or select an existing one to add to the box. So if you wanted to create a new one, you tap on that button there. And then you can choose the photo, you can record the audio prompt, you can set the word, choose what boxes you go in, uh, and so forth and so on. This is a really great feature. So if you wanted to add family photos or um, objects that um, your student is uh, uh, most familiar with, you can easily do that. And then you can also um, select existing photos from the huge, huge library of Speechbox photos, which is in the thousands. And the way that you expand your library locally is by downloading boxes. So the more boxes you download, the more access to photos uh, you will have. And you can see there are just that, like a ton of different photos that you can choose from. So I'll add this word net here and we're gonna add it to medial just cause we want to, for example here. And now you can see it's in the box here. And then the final button up here in the upper right hand corner here is this little lock icon. What's really great about this is that you know, if you're working with younger students and you don't want them to be <clears throat> tapping around, hitting a bunch of different buttons, you can easily just hold down this button for a few seconds and then it's gonna lock the screen. And as you see, there are no more options that they can choose from uh, uh, to accidentally um, you know, change one of the settings or, or something like that. So really, really good for working with uh, younger kids or if you just don't want to um, change any of the settings. To go back, you just simply hold uh, on the lock icon to lock it again. All right, and as I said before, I'll show you how to quickly navigate through some of the photos. So splash. So here's the word splash here. So I've just worked on this with um, my student and I wanna um, move on to the next photo. So I, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can pinch or double tap on the image and that will splash. And that'll keep it at the top. The next thing you can do is you can drag it off the screen which is really cool. And now it's not in the box anymore. Now, but if I wanted to have the photo go back to the bottom, because maybe I wanna go through and cycle through these photos more than once, I'll simply do that. So hippo. Here's one that I, here's the hippo photo. And if you'll see when I drag it off the screen, it's gonna then put it at the bottom of the stack. So that's how you operate the reuse photos on here. So this is really a lot of fun to work with. Kids have um, uh, a great time digging through and trying to find photos. You can give them challenges and say, oh, find the popcorn, and they can then dig through and uh, do that and then work on it. So a lot of different options that you have, um, and um, uh, kids have a great time with this. So let's close out of that. All right, now we're back to the main speech box interface here. And let's go over some of the buttons that you have up here. So again, you have the lock button at the very top right hand corner here. If you hold that down, that will lock the interface 
and prevent any of the settings from being changed. And you can unlock it again by just tapping and holding on that button. The next one here is the add new box button. So if you wanted to add your own custom box, uh, you can do so here. And then you have the option of using initial, medial, or final, or you can just have it as a generic uh, single category box. We'll save that in there and you can see that my box is now on the interface. Uh, and then you have another entry into our settings, which you can tap right there, that little gear icon. And then we have the little eye icon, which is how to get help and information. And it'll give you a pretty good overview of how to use things in Speechbox. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions or you need any help, you just have to send us an email. We'd be more than happy to uh, assist you and you can contact us through uh, Facebook, Twitter, or email with these icons that you see there. The next button below that is our speech box uh, stickers. And for that to operate, you actually need to have data collection on. So let me go into my settings and I'm gonna turn data collection on here. Then I'm gonna exit the settings and I'm gonna go into the speech box, uh, speech box stickers. And what's really great about speech box sti stickers is as you are working with students, they're going to earn stickers that you can use in the boxes or create some uh, scenes in here. It's a lot of fun. It's really great and rewarding because they earn them as they practice more uh, on, uh, on Speechbox. So you tap on the little background button here. That's this uh, little photo here. And then at, again, as you work with the student, they're going to earn more of these so they can go and create new scenes. So I'll just choose this dinosaur background here. And then if you tap on the little sticker icon, you can scroll through and find some of the different stickers to work with. They're really easy and you just tap on them and you drag them onto the um, scene here and you can make some really fun things with the dinosaurs. Uh, and then if you'd like, you can save it to your computer uh, and then email it to them and they can even print it out. So uh, I'm gonna exit out of that. And then the final um, icon on the screen here on the right thing, it, on the right hand side here is our box depot. And this is where all you'll find um, about 3000 different photos available across almost a hundred boxes now. And we continue to add different boxes. And so I'll just scroll, th scroll through the store here and you can see that there is quite a number of different categories and options available, including our brand new speech box phrases, uh, which has um, just about 2000 phrases that you can work with. So um, if you'd like to download a particular box um, here, just tap on any one of those. It'll give you a little bit of a preview of some of the words or phrases that are available, a uh, brief description, and um, it'll tell you which subscription you'll need to download it. So to download and add a new box, all you simply do is tap on the download button there and it will start the download. Some of the boxes take longer than others, but it's pretty quick overall to install. And you can see the download progress there. So I'll just scroll through here and just give you a quick overview of some of these other ones in here. So this down here at the very bottom, this is where you're going to see your backed up boxes. So you can see that I have the so fun box and there's this little check mark that means it's already downloaded. But then I have a box that I named Ethan here. Uh, and then I have two other test boxes. And this was that my box that we added earlier, if you remember. So it, it's showing it as empty in here, which is completely fine because there's no bot, no photos being added, but it's been backed up to your, your account uh, in the cloud. So I did have this Ethan box here. And if I'd like to restore this box so I can work with it later, I simply just tap on it and it will download the box um, when it's done. So you can see we added this school box here earlier. So let's exit out of the, the box depot and go take a look at that. So the first one is, here's the school box that we just downloaded. So now we have all of these different photos. There's about 35 photos in this particular box and you can work on. These are all really familiar um, uh, uh, objects and situations that um, a child would have, have uh, um, at a school. And then here is the Ethan box that we just made, which is just a sample box here. So you can see it's very easy to just create boxes, back them up, download them, uh, and uh, other stuff like that. Now, if you do have, as you can see, I do have quite a number of boxes on here. And let's say I wanted to clean it up a little bit and I wanted to get rid of some of the boxes. That's very easy to do. And I simply just tap and hold until the uh, icons show up. Um, I can edit 
the box. So you see I have this box called my box here. I can tap on the edit and I can change the name and I'll call this my words and save it. And it is now updated to my words. If I'd like to, let's say, remove this box called Ethan over here, I simply tap on the X button and I will delete it and it will remove it. So any of the boxes with these little X's on here can be removed from your device. And you can always download them later, which is really great. All right, so that concludes uh, our basic overview of Speechbox. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.